Thank you so much. It is indeed a pleasure to be with you all today as we talk about risk-based site monitoring. So we're going to jump right into this. Our learning objectives will be, first of all, to recognize where risk-based decision making fits into the clinical quality system, to identify risk for a project related to monitoring, to identify components to include building the project profile risk score, and to apply risk factors to various study decisions such as monitoring plans, site assignments, and frequency. So let's first talk about recognizing where risk-based decision-making fits into the clinical quality system. So our current climate, there are several things that we need to consider when we think about our current climate and why risk-based monitoring is important. First of all, the cost of clinical development deadlines. There are certainly limitations on the resources that can be made available, quite simply. I remember I've been in clinical research for over 20 years now, and there just seems like there used to be more resources that were available for some reason in terms of the flexibility that was given. But now I think there are just so many limitations and, and, and restrictions and requirements that those, those resources are now much more limited. So it is important when we talk, and those resources that I'm referring to are people, time, and money, that we consider all of that and how we can utilize our time and resources most effectively. Fragmentation of roles. So certainly this is into niche players, often without clear distribution of tasks or coordinated organization. And each has its own priorities, risk, and business environment. And this is also reflected in the piecemeal implementation of technology that we oftentimes see with fragmented and unconnected and poorly standardized, standardized solutions. Globalization of clinical trials. This includes the oftentimes complicated <laughs> regulatory business and scientific me or medical environment that we operate in, and then also considering the patient population that uh, corresponds to our particular clinical trial and how that may impact the use of the resources that we have available. Risk aversion, there certainly seems to be an increase in terms of risk adversity within our society and also within our public and private institutions. So oftentimes this is with very little appreciation of the actual or relative risk of different activities leading to imbalanced or disproportionate risk management. So we just have to be informed and understand, and when I say we, one of the key groups of people that needs to be informed in terms of making decisions is your senior management, your executive level management, because they're going to be the ones making decisions about how the resources are used, what's going to be available for your organization, and, and being able to support your pathway to risk management. So it's very important that they're for, informed and understand the risk and the impact of certain decisions that are made. Stifling of innovation. This can be by restrictive business practices or even preconceived ideas that lead to incorrect perceptions or leading to a failure to evolve your processes and resistance to the implementation and acceptance of new approaches or technology. There is a science to clinical research, to monitoring, to quality assurance, just like there is a science to biostatistics, to medicine, epidemiology, and other sciences. However, I have found that sometimes the value and techniques of monitoring and quality assurance are not realized or understood. So it is our job as professionals within the clinical research realm when it comes to managing our monitoring, monitors or managing quality within our organizations, that we help the organization to understand that there is a science to this and that risk management is important 
and the activities that we need to perform to, of course, contribute to the quality of the studies that we are tasked with developing.